So round six of the Cricket West Indies Regional four-day competition bowled off with a bang earlier on Wednesday as the four games across three countries produced five centuries. Let's head over to the Coolidge Cricket Ground in Antigua and Barbuda now where the Windward Islands Volcanoes who elected to bat were dismissed for 162 in 48.3 overs against the West Indies Academy. The spinner Joshua Bishop picked up four for 24 for the Academy team who then battled to 99 for five before rain ended the day's play. The West Indies Academy will begin day two, six to three runs adrift of the Volcano's first innings total. Over in Trinidad and Tobago, centuries from Jason Mohammed, 157, and Amir Jangu, 151, not out, led host TNT Red Force to 374 for four at Stumps after being inserted by the combined campuses and colleges at the Sir Frank Warrior Cricket Ground. The 37-year-old Mohammed getting his 13th first class 100. Amari Goodridge was the pick of the CCC bowlers with 3 for 37. Still in TNT where Barbados Pride got to stumps at 243 for 3 in 90 overs after electing to bat against the Leeward Islands Hurricanes at Queen's Park Oval. A 171 run opening stand between Zachary McCaskey 101 and skipper Craig Brathwit 117 not out piloted the Pride's cause. So um, lots of Good batting there, and uh, West Indies Test captain Craig Brathwaite getting among the hundreds. His opening partner, Zachary McCaskey, getting a hundred as well. And we mentioned the 37-year-old Jason Mohammed. Every time a, a Trinidad and Tobago Red Force team is picked and he is picked, you know, you hear grumblings about he's 37 years old and why don't they give a younger man the opportunity? But it was uh, first class hundred number 13 for Jason Mohammed like, today. Correct, and like... I understand the discussion about, you know, give a younger man an opportunity, but Jason Mohammed has been a player that, where centuries are concerned, he doesn't play. I mean, the numbers speak for themselves. And it's always entertaining for me to watch, to, of course, you know, see players stepping up and getting the century. But that aside, I was really, really happy, Lance, to see um, the skipper, Greg Brathwaite, get that. And Zachary McCaskey, you know, foot to foot with him and, you know, being a great partner as well. So I think... There are a lot of positives coming out of this uh, competition. Looking forward to see how it ends. Yeah, and um, this is the penultimate round of the tournament yeah. now. The Leeward Islands surging to the top of the table from uh, their four consecutive victories that they had. The Volcanoes having a really disappointing batting effort today. Bowled out for 162. Yeah. So that would be worrying for them that they appear to be losing their form at the wrong end of the, of the season because they were doing well for most of the season and now they had lost their last game and then they batted badly today having said that they were rebounding with the ball and being competitive so there's still a chance that they could win this match but a 162 total for the winners volcanoes who for the most part had batted well so far this season would be a disappointing total for them yeah i was shocked myself because winwards were second on the table for quite some time so but it just shows you how the long format of this competition, anything can change. So you can start the tournament w really well. And it's also based on the opponents that you would have faced, Lance. Yeah. But I still think based on what we would have seen previously, the caliber of players, the scores and all that, they have a really good chance to rebound. And I think we won't have to wait too long before we see how that one turns out. Yeah, and we see continued evidence that um, original batters struggle against spin bowling in that same match with the Volcanoes and the West Indies Academy. Apart from Joshua Bishop's four wickets, there was a three-wicket hole, I think, for Johan Lane as well, yeah. another spinner. So it would have been spinners who caused the downfall of the winners Volcanoes in, in that match. So disappointment for them there. But as I said, they have, they have hit back a bit with the ball, and uh, there is a chance the Volcanoes can come back and win this match. And the Leewards didn't bat that well today either. So um, there is a chance that the leaders yeah. um, could stutter here. So the Volcanoes may still be right in the hunt. And Barbados Pride and the Guyana Harpy Eagles not too far off the pace to challenge them. Now at Sabina Park, the Jamaica Scorpions are taking on the defending champions, the Guyana Harpy Eagles. Ricardo Chambers, live on location. Yeah, thank you very much, Lance Whitaker. Well, you talk about um, wonderful performances. We definitely had one here. But it didn't start the way that the Guyana Harpy Eagles would have wanted, the defending champions. The Scorpions won the toss, and they elected 
to bowl first. And yet, yeah, it seemed as if the perfect decision because they had the Guyana Harpy Eagles reeling at 58 for five at lunch and just after 61 for six, the Scorpions were in complete control at that stage. But a 127 run, seventh wicket partnership between Kemal Savory, the 27 year old, and the West Indies uh, test spinner, Gurakesh Moti, well, got them out of that trouble from 61 for 6 to 188 when Moti went for 56. It was his second first class half century. But guess what? Savory went on to his second first class century. He ended the day on 127, a career best for him as the Harpy Eagles closed on 278 for 7. And I do have the man of the moment with me, Kemal Savory. Um, Kemal, first of all, talk to me about your knock today. It was quite an innings. Yeah, yeah, yeah. First of all, I want to um, give God thanks and praise. Without him, nothing is not possible. Um, yeah, it's always amazing scoring 100 when the team under pressure. So um, today I put up my hands and I must give God thanks and praise once again. One of the things I noticed is that the head of selectors, Desmond Haynes, was here at Sabina Park watching. You must have been thinking to yourself, it's a great time to perform. Uh, not really, not really. Um, I just want to go there, you know, and do good and let my performance speak for itself. But you feel you must have impressed the big man today, though? Yeah, definitely, definitely. <laughs> yeah. Y yeah, you know, the Harpy Eagles were in trouble. You were 61 for six. Talk to me about the innings and how you conceptualized it and, and put this together. Yeah, well, uh, as a senior campaigner, you know, I, I, I read the um, situation well. And with Gurakesh Moti as a senior player, batting with me, I, I, he, 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 he's, so, he's so calm and collective, you know, and he told me that once we stay there and get a good partnership, it could be better for us. And it, it happens that me and Gurakesh, we, we, we share a good partnership. I actually kind of remember so much, but it was a good one. Yeah, definitely was a good partnership. I want you to talk to me about how important this is for you, though, because this is only your second score over 25 in seven innings this season. So I get the feeling as if it was important for you to get a big one today. Yeah, exactly. Um, well, after, the, after we, we went on the two weeks break, I went home back. I spent some time with my family to relax, relax and reflect on where I went wrong. And I just said that, you know what, when I get an opportunity in the next game, I want to put up my hand. Well, you certainly did that. Congratulations on a very good knock and putting your team in a very good position at 278 for seven. Quickly, how do you feel about the position that the team is in? Oh, uh, yeah, um, 278. Uh, I would take that any day after um, at six, six or something for six. I would take that any day. Come back tomorrow and with the skip out there with, with myself, see where it goes. All the best. Yeah, thank you. All right, yeah, Kemal Saver, the man who starred for the Guyana Harpy Eagles, 127 not out. He will resume on day number two with the captain, Tevin Imlak, who is on 33. By the way, Imlak had to retire hurt before lunch. Um, seemed to be a wrist issue. We'll get confirmation on that. But he returned later in the day and batted through the day. The partnership is so far 90 um, himself and Savory. The Jamaica Scorpions have put a few opportunities down, though, including Savory when he was on 119 it would have been a great way for the Scorpions to end the day but as it stands now it is the Guyana Harpy Eagles in control 278 for seven at close day one of this regional four-day encounter at Sabina Park it's fourth versus fifth Guyana Harpy Eagles want the points they want to move up into the top three two maybe even one Lance Mariah Ricardo, um, Desi Haynes, the chief selector for the West Indies um, in Jamaica for this match at Sabina Park. And usually when selectors make a trip like that, sometimes they have their eyes on, on particular players. And, um, um, you know, the, the Guyana Harpy Eagles have some real good talent mm -hmm. coming through. And um, Desi Haynes was there having a look at them. And um, Savory, as Ricardo just mentioned, um, would have played well enough to get his attention, although his body of work so far this season hasn't been that impressive. But um, I think I agree with the young batsman that when you hit 100, lifting your team from a perilous position like 6-1 for 6, it feels better. Yeah. You're, you're, the, the performance it's a fight. feels... 
Yeah, and, and Gurukesh Moti, although he can bat, he's not a frontline batsman. So the way they got together with that partnership and rebuilt the Guyana innings, very, very impressive. And the Jamaica Scorpions will feel that they, they, didn't, they didn't follow through with a no. good start that they had. Um, not that the Guyanese didn't bat well, but if you're a bowling team and that happens to you, you're going to feel and as you if you, you did some things wrong and you, you let things slip. But the, the Scorpions have been very up and down this season. The uh, Harpy Eagles didn't start well, but as the season has gone on, they have, they have gradually uh, gotten better. And a 278 for seven at stumps for them, uh, a very, very satisfying closer play score for them, given where they were earlier in the day. Yeah, they'll feel really, really relieved. A good bounce back. And uh, as uh, Ricardo mentioned, at a time when the selector is there, if it's one time you want to perform and get his eyes on you, would be, you know, when he's relaxing and watching the match and all of that. So I think it was a perfect display today. Uh, but anything could happen tomorrow, Lance. Conditions, all these different things, weather. So let's wait and see. Yeah, so the sixth round, day one, closes in the West Indies Championship, so first class season here in the Caribbean, and uh, quite a few of the matches interestingly poised as we head into day two tomorrow. And uh, we will live on the Sports Max Zone on Thursday, uh, drop in at Sabina Park and get the update again as we did today. On the other side of the break, I think it's just the facts time. Back in a moment. <laughs>